Thank you very much. And uh, welcome all to the planning committee for June. And um, the first item on our agenda, any apologies for absence? From Councillor Peter Black, Chair. Peter. OK, thank you. Second, then, is any disclosures of personal or prejudicial interests? Any? Very well, I have Chairman Reedy. Is he the person? Sorry. He's a councillor. Yeah, do um, it's number. It's the item number three. It's the last one. Yeah. Will Thomas. Obviously, I know him. I got nothing personal. Only yeah. personal, but not prejudicial. Right. So, do we all declare an interest in Gareth? It would depend on your level of friendship and knowledge. Obviously, everybody knows him, right. but it depends on your level okay. of friendship. Right. Any others? Any other? Declarations of interest. No. Oh, yes. Sorry. Yeah, item six. As I, I've uh, met the developer on a few occasions on uh, a few different projects that they've carried point. out. Good so point. Yes. Personal. Mm. Yes. So. Right. Thank you. Any others? No. Right then. Um, item three is the minutes to approve and sign the minutes of the previous meeting. There's a correct meeting there, actually. Page one. Two, and three, page four, five, six, and seven, and then finally the minutes of the 24th of May. Would somebody who's present move them as a true record, please? I move, Chair. Yeah, definitely. Thank you very much. Right, thank you. Item four then, and any items for withdrawal or deferral? Not at this stage, Chair. Right, thank you. So we move on to the agenda proper now. Is item five is the public right of way, the application for a modification order in Birch Grove, and that's your Sally Young. Thank you, Chair. Um, an application was made to the authority dated the 5th of September 2012 for a modification order under Section 53 of the Wildlife and Countryside Act 1981 to add a footpath running from Herbert Thomas Way Trunk Road to Herbert Thomas Way Loop Road. Three evidence questionnaires were submitted with the application showing use between five and six years. The legal tests are set out in the report all the usual consultees were approached about the proposed addition of the footpath and no responses were received. It is not possible to show uninterrupted use of the claimed footpath for 20 years and as a result the application does not satisfy the legal tests. Common law dedication cannot be deemed to have occurred in this case as the landowner has not set out a path for use and has not encouraged the public to use the path. There is insufficient evidence to show use of by the public at large as of right. Therefore, it's recommended that the claim be rejected. Thank you. Thank you. Any questions? Anyone wants to raise anything? No? OK, we can see the recommendation there on page nine is that the this application to add a footpath is refused. And we'll take a vote on that. Do you want to do it electronic or? Uh, no, I'll, I'll do it quick. I'll do it uh, verbally, Chair. So, right. Councillor Matthew Bailey. Matthew? Should I take a vote recommendation? Yeah, yeah. Four, yeah. four against yeah. abstain, Sean. Let's say four against abstain. Yeah. Yeah. Approved, Chairman. Councillor Phil Downing. Paul. Councillor Alan Jeffrey. Councillor Mary Jones. Paul. Councillor Sarah Keaton. Four. Councillor Mike Lewis. Four. Richard Lewis. Four. You, Nicola Matthews. Four. Mike White. Four. Andrew Williams. Four. And myself, Chair Paul Lloyd. Yeah, four. Thank you. Oh, that's unanimous. Chair. That's, yeah, that's you've carried unanimously. Thank you very much. And then we move on to um, item six there on page 19. Is the uh, is that Coyd Bark in Ponte de Lice? And it's yours here, isn't it? Yeah. Thank you, Chair. Uh, this application was considered by Planning Committee on the 5th of April 2022, when committee resolved to defer consideration of the application until the next Planning Committee 
to give the applicant the opportunity to submit amended plans in an attempt to overcome the recommended reasons for refusal. Uh, since the last committee, um, the planning permission that provided access to the site has expired and officers consider it hasn't been lawfully implemented. This would mean that the proposed development site doesn't have a, an approved access. As this issue has arisen since last committee, we don't consider we're in a position to uh, recommend approval of the application or refusal at this stage because the applicant hasn't had, had the opportunity to address the access issues. Uh, so in view of this, it's considered that the report shouldn't be presented to this committee, but we'll present the report once the access issues have been further considered by the applicant. So this report is just for information, Chair. Yeah, thank you very much. And uh, we, well, we await another application then, if it's to be. OK, thank you, folks. And then we move on then to um, item seven. And the first item there is the, the CK store in one hour, and you'll find that on page 23. Thank you. And that's, that's me, Chair. Thank you. To Andrew. Thank you. Yes, thank you, Chair. Uh, so Ian's got a presentation on this one, uh, and before we start, I would just like to refer members to the update sheet because there has been some late correspondence on this application, which is addressed on there, uh, and there is one error in the report. So the application site is now uh, within the ward of Wanarloid. OK, so if you can go to the site location plan, please, Ian. The application is being reported to planning committee as it was called in by the local member and has met the commission committee threshold. The application site boundary has been amended since it was originally submitted and now just relates to the internal unit within the former CKs itself, which is now branded as Anisa local. So the land in blue is land within the applicant's ownership. And the red is the application site. So Nisa is a retail store located on Swansea Road in Monarloid with a dedicated parking area on the eastern side that's open from 7 a.m. to 9 p.m. And the application seeks planning permission for the change of use of part of the store to an A3 takeaway. If you can go to the next slide, please, Ian. Thank you. So this is a Google Maps aerial view. Uh, this is an aerial overview of the retail store located on the southern side of Swansea Road in Wanarloid with the site denoted by the red arrow, comprising a smaller unit within the main store. The area is predominantly residential in nature with residential properties either side of the store on the opposite side of the road and to the south, but you'll also note the mature trees along the southern boundary. Uh, there is a building at the rear, um, which is seemingly is the rear of the store, which is located at a higher level and is occupied by a martial arts centre, total self-protection. If you can go to the next slide, please, Ian. Thank you. So the top left is a view looking along the frontage of the site towards the main entrance on the corner of the premises. The top right photo is a view looking east along Swansea Road with residential properties in the foreground. The store in the middle and further residential properties beyond. Uh, you'll note that there are no parking restrictions along the road. The bottom right picture showed the existing car parking area serving the convenience store and the martial arts centre, which has about circa 21 spaces. And the bottom left is the eastern side elevation of the units on which a flue is proposed uh, approximately uh, over the silver car when viewed from the car park. You can go to the proposed plans, please, Ian. Thank you. On the right hand side, you'll see the unit which is subject to this application uh, within the store in what is proposed to be used as a takeaway shown in green. Uh, the unit was previously occupied by a hairdresser and equates to circa 34 and a half metres uh, out of uh, a, a store of 322 square metres. On the left hand side at the top, you've got the front elevation, which shows the new proposed flue adjacent to the car park on the right hand side of the building, viewed against the backdrop of the martial arts centre at the rear. Beneath this is the side elevation of the unit viewed from the car park, uh, which projects about one metre above the ridge of the unit. And as I said earlier, the proposed own opening hours are the same as the convenience store, 7 a.m. to 9 p.m. So we've had nine letters of objection have been received in response to this application, along with a petition signed by residents from 54 different addresses, raising concerns over smell, noise, parking, highway safety, opening hours, rubbish and antisocial behaviour. 
The local highways authority and pollution control have both been consulted on the proposals and neither has objected. So the principle of the use is considered acceptable in an existing commercial building. Visually, the flue is relatively modest and is not considered to cause any visual harm. The pollution control team have reviewed the details uh, of the flue and consider the extraction equipment is acceptable, both in terms of noise and odour. Uh, and this is required to ensure there's no detrimental impact on residential amenity as such. Condition four in the officer's report would require its installation prior to first beneficial occupation and maintenance in accordance with the manufacturer's details thereafter. The opening hours are the same as the store, as I've said, and would be secured via condition. Uh, and it should be important to point out that no additional floor space is being created. So it's not considered that there's any significant increase in comings and goings that would be unduly harmful to residents. Whilst the Pollution Control Department did request the condition uh, with regarding the restriction of delivery times, it's not considered reasonably reasonable or necessary to do so when the existing unit is unencumbered uh, and given the scale of the proposal. It's not considered to give significant rise to parking demand, albeit there may be a quicker turnover of vehicles. And as I said, there's no uh, objection from the local highways authority. So overall, the proposal is considered acceptable and the recommendation is one of approval subject to conditions. Thank you, Chair. Yes, thank you very much, Andrew. And um, we've got two speakers to address us. First is the first is Hazel Webb. Yes. You've got five minutes to address the committee, please. OK, right. Uh I'm do this. Obviously, I um, live next door to CKs, so I'm the car park site, um, which I have a lot of issues with my wall boundary there. Um, before purchasing the property um, on the 7th of January this year, we had no idea about the hot food outlet, which we had. If we had known about, I would have not purchased this property. Since we have moved into the property, we have had no end of problems with CK's delivery drivers, the customers for CK's and the customers of the self-defense class blocking off our driveway, stopping us from leaving our property. And I have many photos of this happening. Litter is also an issue as CK's customers have no regard for anyone or the environment as they dispose of their litter in the car park, on our driveway, on the wall and in the garden. The pathway leading to CKs from the estate behind is full of litter and is never ever cleaned up. It is a total mess. We have witnessed antisocial behaviour in the car park, which we have notified our local SPSO. I personally feel that if planning is approved, then the volume of vehicles will overspill from the car park more often causing obstructions on the pavements and highways, as this happens on a daily Basis. The volume of litter will increase, which is detrimental to the environment and the wildlife. The potential smell from the proposed Class A3 hot food takeaway would spill out onto the surrounding property properties throughout the day, and there could be a potential increase in vermin, which could also spill into the surrounding properties, as there has been no removal or cleanup of the litter in the car park. I hope that you will consider the effects of the local residents with the impact that it will have. Thank you. Thank you very much. And then the local ward members with us as well. Councillor Wendy Lewis. Thank you, Chair. Just in case anybody's unaware, when Arloyd is a village, a small village, and with four eating places already, we have a restaurant, two pubs who do food, and a Chinese takeaway. And I know it's Chinese because it's above the door, unlike this proposed takeaway, as we don't know what is going to be. On the report, it says about highway safety as a large car park. It is always full now. And it says unrestricted road parking, which we've just seen when there's nobody there. The people to the left, there's a cross, sorry, there's a cross in Ireland right outside CK's so there's no parking there, a speed camera because of two fatalities, so no parking there. Out and further up to the left, people who live there with no drives park on the road, so no parking there, except over people's drives on the left hand side. Also, I see antisocial behaviour wouldn't increase on the report, 
Well, I would love to believe that, as there's enough antisocial behaviour in and out of the store, and will, I'm sure, be worse with the takeaway. Also, I see it's no extra litter on the report. Well, that is a ridiculous statement. Maybe look on Astra George with takeaway rubbish thrown everywhere, which then the council will have to remove, as they would in this case. And I know this because I litter pick outside CKs myself. It also says it's only taken up the space of the existing hairdressers. Oh, that's OK then. A hairdresser's who this village use and more most walk there and are disabled find it easier to visit this this place there so again saying there will be no extra cars in the car park is wrong when a takeaway is there also there is a beauty salon which will be which it will be next door to the said takeaway i use this salon and i would think twice when it's there as there will be smells and noise coming through and would not be a perfect environment for having a facial or any treatment. I have laid out what I and the residents think would affect, be the effect on their everyday life with this proposed takeaway there. So I ask the committee to consider the facts I have read out before deciding the outcome. Okay, thank you very much. Right, I've got to open it up first. Councillor Downing first and then. Yeah, thank you, Chair. Um, there's a lot being said uh, by a local member and uh, I'm one of the people living close by, and I'm sure the, the officer will answer a lot of them as we, we get quite a few of them to every one of our meetings um, with regards to litter, um, over-competition, the loss of the hairdressers. I mention these because uh, they, they don't really come under planning, which um, which is a problem when people who live close by um, are against anything and, and they use antisocial behaviour and obviously we can't we can't preempt that there's going to be antisocial behaviour on any planning. But my, my, my question, funny enough, really is back to 2004 and it's in the report when it says uh, the proposed development would be seriously detrimental to the amenities of the occupants of the nearby residential properties by virtue of additional noise, so you've agreed there was the additional noise in 2004, smell and fumes and general disturbance associated with unsocial, unsocial hours. Um, and then on the report we've got now, it says it's noted that previous similar, applic similar applications for a takeaway use was refused on the basis of a negative impact on neighbours. Even if it was 2004, in my view, nothing has changed. The neighbours are still there and everything that you've put. So what, what I want um, the officer to explain more fully to me is what has changed. I know you've mentioned the LDP, but it's no good saying that um, um, not consider that the proposals are in conflict with the current LDP. Tell us why they're not in conflict with the, with the current LDP and explain why things have changed and why we as a committee will sit here and think it's going to improve uh, the situation in Wanaloi, not make it worse. Thank you, Chair. Thanks, Thanks for that. Councillor Lewis. Well, there. Uh, right. I, 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 <laughs> can I say this? Uh, I want to ask a few questions first because I think it is important. Um, if I remember this site, and I do remember this site, it was initially a garage and it had planning consent from the local Labour member for Benalloy or for Cockett in those days. And he it got change of use from his garage to a grocery shop. So that has got to be 40 years ago. Now, again, I was buyer beware. I, I, I'm warning people when they go and buy, if there was a pub next door to it, you can't complain there's a pub next door to it. If there was not a pub next door to it and they're, they're going to open the pub, you know you're going to have problems. So I, I think that that it's personally, if they didn't find out what the business was uh, from the solicitor's point of view, uh, I, I think I'm very sorry for the, the, the neighbour, but the problem is I can't see uh, this council or the Welsh Assembly 
turning it down because it's a commercial property on a commercial site of over 40 years standing. It's probably 15 nearly. Uh, and I think this is the problem you've got. It's all right saying we'll turn it down, but you've got to look and you know well, you you guys know well, it will go to appeal to the Welsh Assembly and they will ask one question, how long has it been operating? And as a number of businesses, not just one. And uh, to be honest with you, if, if we stop businesses because of the deliveries, it's different when you build in something like Tesco's, where you've got 100, 120 lorries a day coming in and out. There, it's, it, this is the difference. And you give the, the, we gave Tesco's the permission for 12 hours, 24 hours, etc. We knew what we were doing, and that was it. And we looked at it very well. But this has been going for such a long time. I don't, uh, I mean, as far as I'm very sorry for the, for the neighbours, but at the end of the day, buyer beware. Thank you. I got two other speakers. Councillor White first. Yes, thank you very much, Chair. Um, I've got a couple of points, really. Um, in regards to the issue of the pollution control, I know we've had a further uh, the, the, the report that the, the, the officers obviously have had further information regarding the, the ventilation extraction from the pollution control team. But can we have any assurances that that will be monitored? Okay, that you know the 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 the, the pollution levels, and that will will obviously be be uh, monitored. You know for the the equipment there. Um, if 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 we are minded to approve this application, this afternoon, I'm also on traffic on traffic ground on highways. I noticed, as I say, this uh, premises is is on is on a corner or a corner of the road. As has been stated already, obviously Swansea Road is the main artery road in and out the village, and obviously leads down to Gowden and further on, and obviously into the city centre the other way. So, um, can the highways officer assure us that all all highways measures have been taken into consideration in regards to um, safety, road safety, and obviously uh, public safety as well? And clarification, if I could, please just ask Chair. On this mention about the opening hours, in one part of the document, obviously it says uh, at, until 20, 21 hours clo uh, close it, closing. But of course, in the other part of the of the uh, document, obviously it says till till 22 hours, 10 p.m. Can we have clarification on that, please, Jay? Thank you. Come back for that in a minute, uh, Councillor. Councillor Keaton. Hi, uh, I might be going off piste a little bit here, so stop me if I am. But going back to what uh, Councillor Lewis said about the fact that there's already a takeaway there and it's a small village, how do we know there's actually a need for more takeaways? Because it's been proven the more takeaways you have, the unhealthier the people in an area become, particularly the children. Now, with the Future Generations Act, I thought it had a bit of teeth and we should be able to say, well, it's not good for the health of the people there. Do we really need it? Sorry if I'm not making any sense. It's just something that uh, popped out at me when you were saying that it's a small village. Why do you need it there? So thanks. OK, thank you. And no one else got their hand up to speak? No. A um, couple of points to come back on there in highways, pollution, etc. Andrew, do you want to respond? Yeah, <clears throat> yeah. Thank you, Chair. Um, obviously, the residents raised issues that um, are already happening there with regards to illegal parking and litter. Uh, this is a change of use application, uh, and we don't have any evidence that this small takeaway use operating out of part of the existing retail store would result in any material increase in terms of any law, uh, um, illegal parking, which is by in any event controlled by other means, uh, and litter, which is again controlled by other legislation. In terms of smell, uh, as I said, we've cons you know, um, consulted the Pollution Control Department. They're satisfied that the details submitted are acceptable. 
And as Councillor White requested, if we received a complaint, we could go out and make sure that um, the equipment had been installed uh, and was being operated in accordance with the approved details. Pollution control would also have uh, controls under their legislation as well. In terms of competition, that's not a material planning consideration. As I said, if people want to apply for more takeaways or different uses, we've got to consider them on their basis and see whether we think they're acceptable. Um, so whilst we do have to consider applications in accordance with the um, Health and uh, Future Generations uh, and Wellbeing Act, one of the easiest ways or the, or the way we are meant to do that is consider applications in accordance with the development plan. So we don't have any policies that preclude a certain number of takeaways or any other uh, uses uh, such as that within such an area. And we've got to consider each application on its merit. So we've considered this one and we think it's acceptable. Um, the opening hours are 7 a.m. to 9 p.m they would be controlled by condition. So pollution control actually said that they suggested hours of 10 p.m., which is an hour later than that proposed. So as I said, we'd restrict it to that applied for, which is the hours of operation. If in the future the applicant wanted to amend those hours, then they would have to submit another application, which, as I said, could be called back into planning committee if it was deemed necessary. Councillor Downing raised the query about the previous application. Well, the previous application uh, was for what is now being used as the martial arts gym and had a floor area of 225 square metres. This application, as I said, is 34 and a half square metres, so significantly smaller than the previous one. In the previous application back in 2004, I believe it was, we, the planning authority did not consult with pollution control. And since then, things have moved on in terms of, you know, the, uh, the effectiveness of filtration systems. So we've had various appeal decisions that providing the applicant provides um, filtration systems that are considered acceptable, then there should be no uh, odour or noise impact from them. In terms of noise and disturbance, just in terms of general comings and goings, this is a, an existing commercial unit and already has a, a high degree of comings and goings at various points. So we do not consider that on the basis of this application, uh, given the small nature of the actual unit, that it would generate any significant noise and disturbance over uh, the lawful fallback position. With, the, with regards to highways, I'll pass you over to my colleague Amanda Pugh so she can answer those questions uh, on that. Thank you, Chair. Yeah, thank you, Andrew. Amanda? Yeah, that's fine. Um, in response to uh, Councillor Mike White, as my colleague Andrew has already said, there is a you know an established mixed commercial use at the site. There's an established car park which may or may may be well used, but is there as a as a as a facility to be used. There's an established access onto Swansea Road. Um, it's existing uh, deliveries, servicing and deliveries for the existing shop, for the existing beauticians, for the existing hairdressers. Obviously, the hairdressers is going to be replaced by the takeaway. Um, and uh, on balance, we didn't consider that the change of use of that small element would give rise to any highway safety concerns, given that there is an established car park at the site. Thank you all. No other hands up to speak? No? Perhaps then now uh, we will. No, then we can take a vote on this then. And you can see the. Uh, Recommendation there is one of to approve, and you see that on page 31. Right, Councillor. <clears throat> yeah, Councillor Matthew Bailey. For. Phil Downing. For. Alan Jeffrey. For. Mary Jones. For. Sarah Keaton. Abstain. Mike Lewis. For. Richard Lewis. For. Nicola Matthews. For. Mike White. Sorry, Chair. For. Andrew Williams. For. And Paul Lloyd. And for. That's 10 for one abstention. OK, so that's carried. Thank you very much. And then uh, we move on to the next item. Item two is Park Forest Park. And you find that on page 
33. And um, it's over to Hayley. Thank you, Chair. Uh, I firstly can I refer members to the update sheet. Um, there's an error in the con in condition 13 on page 49 of the report. Um, the error is to remove the word development and replace with delivery, so it's delivery management plan. OK, this application has been reported to planning committee for decision because a recommendation of an approval would constitute a departure from policy RC7 of the LDP. Due to its location within an out of centre retail park and the proposed size of the development exceeding the 200 square metre small scale threshold as stated within the policy. The application seeks full planning permission for the erection of a modern freestanding McDonald's restaurant class A3 with drive through facility and associated car parking and landscaping at Tesco Extra Park Forest Park Swansea. Next slide please Ian. The application site is located within the Forest Park Retail Park and on a section of the car park of the existing Tesco store and is surrounded by a mix of retail uses with residential properties located to the northwest of the site. Access to the site is via the existing access of the A483 Ponte de Lice Road and the Ford Canoin Junction. Next slide, museum. The proposed building will be two storeys in height with a flat roof design and plant placed on top of the roof, finished in contemporary materials. The application also comprises of an outdoor patio seating area, as well as landscaping, external lighting, litter bins and pedestrian access points, with a scissor type lift installed to the rear for deliveries and recycling storage area. Next slide, please, Ian. The ground floor of the building will comprise of a 95-seater restaurant with associated counter, kitchen and toilet areas, with the first floor comprising of a further kitchen, office, storage area, freezer and staff room. The roof area will comprise of the ventilation and plant extraction. The proposed development will operate 24 hours a day, Monday to Sunday, and will provide 28 parking bays and 8 cycle parking spaces. Next slide, please, Ian. Access to the proposed development would be via the A48 via the existing Tesco access road and the drive through lane would run clockwise around the building with customers exiting past the petrol station and onto Fort, Fort Ganoin. An amended delivery management plan was submitted on the 13th of April, which sets out revised highway layouts and manoeuvres regarding the proposed scheme. Three letters of objection have been received regarding the uh, increase in noise and disturbance, increase in traffic, litter, antisocial behaviour and the lack of need for an additional A3 use in this area. With regard to the litter and antisocial behaviour, these matters are dealt with outside the planning remit and the lack of need is not a material planning consideration. However, the other con concerns raised will be addressed further in the presentation. Therefore, the main issues to consider in this application are the principle of the construction of a restaurant with drive through facility in this location, impact upon visual amenity, impact upon residential amenities of neighbouring properties and the impact of ecology, parking and highway safety. With regard to the principle of development in this location, the thrust of the LDP policy seek to ensure that retail and leisure proposals must in the first inset, instance assess the suitability of sites and premises within the city centre district and local centres. With Swansea Central Retail Centre located at the top of the retail hierarchy and is the sequentially preferred location for retail and leisure development. However, the application site forms part of the Forest Park Retail Park, which is a designated out of centre retail park and therefore policy RC7 applies. One of the key considerations of this application is whether the drive through is acceptable in this location. Policy RC7 has specific recognition for drive through restaurants and cafes, which represent a class A3 operation that due to its circulation requirements, and site constraints would not typically be located within a centre and may instead be accommodated within a retail park. The policy states that proposals for Class A3 within such locations will be restricted to small scale provision that is ancillary and incidental to the primary retail function of the retail park or facility that due to its operational and functional requirements cannot reasonably be accommodated within a centre. The policy therefore to find small scale as a facility less than 200 square metres gross flow area. 
The sequential consideration has been submitted by the applicant, and whilst it fails to identify potential sites within the city centre, national policy does allow local authorities a flexible approach in some cases, and therefore in this case, the nature of its re na the nature of its use is recognised as being less suited to inner city locations. And for that reason, while the sequential test is not considered to address all aspects of the retail hierarchy, it is sufficient to, in this instance and it satisfies the requirements. The application uh, uh, must be considered as a technical departure, as I've said, because it does um, the pre proposal equates to approximately 249 square metres gross flow area, which is over the size considered by the policy. However, the public flow area only comprises of 141 square metres. Now, on balance, the increased flow space doesn't give rise to any additional concerns and is considered compliant with the policy. There is no unacceptable impact on visual amenity as the proposed design and materials are considered to reflect the existing retail units within the retail park, plus there will be substantial planting and landscaping proposed to reduce any visual amenity impact. The application site is set away from any neighbouring properties, so there's no unacceptable impact in terms of overlooking, overshadowing, overbearing. Uh, with regard to the increase in noise and disturbance and the increase in traffic, the proposed development will potentially increase the volume of cars as access in the site, as uh, but this is already a very busy retail centre with Tesco's previously being open 24 hours uh, a day, six days a week. And in view of this is not considered the development will have any unacceptable impact um, on the residential amenities. And this is further supported by the no concerns raised by the Pollution Control Department. With regard to highway safety, whilst the proposed development will, will result in a loss of existing car parking spaces at the site, it is advised this part of the car park is currently underused and that much of the daytime use of the facility is likely to be from shared customers who are already visiting the retail park, with the majority of additional users to be visiting in the event when the retail park is quieter. Therefore, on balance, it is considered there are enough spaces remaining within the site to accommodate the parking demand for both existing and proposed development. With regard to the revised layout and manoeuvre details, the highway officer has raised no objection subject to conditions, and therefore this complies with the policies T1, T5 and T6 of the LDP. There are no concerns raised regarding land contamination and ecology subject to suitably worded conditions, and the application is recommended for approval subject to the conditions stated within the officer's report. Thank you, Chair. Thank you very much. A thorough report. Um, any hands up, anyone? Councillor Downing. Yeah, Chair. Um, when I first read this, um, I thought, oh, it's not a bad idea because Tesco's were there, it must be the, one of the biggest car parks yeah. in Great Britain. Um, and the area itself is on a downward slope. And, and if this in any way would kickstart that area, because if you walk around, there, there's quite a lot of shops closed there at the moment. Mm. Uh, this is a bad sign for us, a bad, for, bad sign for Swansea. So if anything could kickstart this area, then we should be 100% behind it. Uh, and, I, and I would agree with the recommendation, Chair. Thank you. I'll come back to you. Uh, Councillor Mary Jones. Yeah, thank you. It's a map. I couldn't quite understand it. I know the area, but uh, you know, I'm not there that often. And I can understand you've got the car wash and you've also got where you um, click and collect. I couldn't see where the restaurant fitted in um, next to the car wash, even though that's uh, mentioned in the report a few times. So could we have a sort of a better image or could you point it out with a, a pointer how it's going to sit along with the actual um, car wash because obviously the petrol filling station is the other side i understand that bit thank you, um, you yes, are, yeah. ian if you pull up the site photographs i think that might might help councillor um maybe you want to have a look with it down oh, you know, yeah that that might be helpful um so obviously councillor you know how do you, you come into the site off the a478 is it off um ponte de Lice road yeah, I usually come in the other way, but I know oh, where okay. If we OK, if we come in the other way, then just past the petrol station, as you just curl round into the car park, it just it'll just be in there. Just, just that's right with the white. So the current click and collect places, I think, is that white dot on that plan then. But it'll be in that bottom part of the um, that that's the current click and click and collect. So it'll be within this area here. 
Is that is that a bit more yeah, clear okay. for you? Yes. Uh, the other map was better actually, where you had the word McDonald's on it. I could actually see okay. it. Okay. If that if that helps, the petrol station is located to the north of that map. You can see the road that comes in and the roundabout. Yes. And as you as you come in, then you you would turn uh, right into the car park. You would continue into the car park, but there would be a turning off then into the drive through. Right. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Okay. Right. Thank you. And then, then Councillor Mike White. Yeah. Thanks again, Chair. Yeah. I had like another question, if I could, to the hybrid officer. Was in report on page forty, the issue uh, last one up. Uh, Paragraph there quite clearly states this area of the plan has been updated. Low cause of concern that this appears too close to parking location curved areas. Can you um, possibly con con uh, confer regarding those parking concerns? Has all these issues been addressed by the applicant? Okay, come back for you, with that for you. Um, uh, Councillor Richard Lewis. How many people will this employ, Chairman? Uh, Any other members? Oh, nothing. Thanks, Chair. Um, <clears throat> overall, I think uh, it, it lends itself to this type of development. My only concern is that I don't offer some material planning consideration, but there is a McDonald's already at the motorway services, and there's a McDonald's further down near Matalan. Not that I know every location of McDonald's. You, but um, I, you know, I think this, that, that this would make a three Did McDonald's. I could probably have this would make a three McDonald's within a couple of miles. I don't know if that is something that could be considered as well. That's a large. The same as the uh, cockpit where uh, well, I'll the one, wasn't it? Right. No other members got their hands up here. Oh, um, sorry. Two things to come back on then, um, Hayley, and um, perhaps the highways one. I, I leave the highways one for the highway officer. With regards to Councillor Lewis's um, question about employees, it's not actually stated in the application how many exact employees um, it will employ, but I can, I can get that information and come back to you. Um, with regards to the last one about um, how many McDonald's are in one area? And again, uh, like Andrew said in his application, uh, we don't have a policy regarding concentrations of uses. Uh, there's no policy restriction for that, and we consider each application on its own merits. Yeah, indeed. Thank you. Amanda, there was a highways query. Yeah, I'll just refer you to my colleague Spiro because he dealt with the uh, highways observations on this application. Spiro, would you like to comment? I will, thank you. Good afternoon all. Uh, Spiro Panagi, uh, Highway Authority. I work with Amanda, as she just kindly said there. Um, I believe the question that Councillor Mike White raised was whether all the parking issues had been resolved to our satisfaction, or was it m more of one of layout? Yeah, that's right, uh, Spiro, exactly on regards to the actual safety there, and of course, of the issues raised regarding um, of the of the concerns raised by 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 the highways officers of, of being close and uh, problems with, with the curbs and to the car wash site as well. That's fine. Um, so the layout underwent quite a few iterations. Initially, um, we were against the proposal based on um, you know uh, what we perceived to be uh, severe highway safety issues. That's when service and delivery was proposed to to take place internally within the car park. Um, we didn't like those proposals. Um, we recommended uh, refusal during, not at committee, but during the process. Um, the applicant worked to change the, the service and delivery proposals. They are now out with the application, so they take place outside of the site that you see. They will utilize the main access road. They will go around the petrol station, as you said there, around the roundabout and pull into the existing recycling area, keeping all uh, large vehicle movements out of the car park. Um, they will also take place within the quiet hours, so they're restricted overnight servicing and delivery. So refuse um, deliveries, McDonald's deliveries will take place out of hours. With strict adherence to that delivery management plan, we feel that it would be no greater risk than is currently there at the present. So uh, that was our ruling. But whilst um, we may have had issues initially, uh, on balance, the applicant has satisfied that there is no greater risk posed at the moment 
oh, there will be no greater, greater risk posed in the future with those measures in place than we currently experience at the moment. Thank you very much. OK. Yeah. Chair, sorry, can I just come back to you? I've uh, just had a quick uh, look up the application form and it says that there will be 65 full time employees employed uh, by this proposed development. I had a feeling I read it somewhere and Ian was just going to point it out now. Thank Couldn't you very much. <laughs> All right, thank you. Right, no other queries, no? Just can I so, just make a sort of an, like a, an observation or a comment about the development. I'm sure uh, from my uh, memory that, that part of the car park was quite a sort of depressing, unkempt part of the area. And I'm sure that the development would sort of improve the aesthetics of the of the area, so likewise, my colleague, I, I would support the application. Thank you very much. Um, we can't see any other hands up, no? So we can uh, move to the vote on this then. You see the recommendation on page 47 is to approve, and so we'll take that vote now. Yep, Councillor Matthew Bailey. Four. Bill Downing. Four. Alan Jeffrey. Four. Mary Jones. Four. Sarah Keaton. Four. Mike Lewis. Four. Richard Lewis. Four. Nicola Matthews. Four. Mike White. Four. Andrew Williams. Four. And Paul Lloyd. Yeah, four. It's unanimous, Jeff. Carried unanimously. Thank you very much. Thank you, and Jeff. then um, we move on to item three then, which is on page 53, and that's at uh, Cambridge Road. And that's yours, Chris. It, so, it is. Thank, thanks, Chairman. Yeah, so um, th this application is what we call a householder application for uh, the newer members of the planning committee. Um, you would normally see this type of application at uh, committee. The only reason this, this, this application is here today is because the applicant is actually one of our councillors. It is Councillor Will Thomas's application. So for reasons of transparency, we bring councillor applications and, and indeed officer applications um, to planning committee for, as I say, for transparency reasons. So um, in terms of the application itself, there are two elements to it. Um, if you scroll down, please, Ian, um, we have uh, a proposed single storey side extension, um, which is kind of quite small in nature, and the creation of a new driveway and associated uh, crossover. Um, so if you if you can look at the plan on the left there, you can see the new crossover and driveway is being proposed um, and the side extension um, actually takes the form of a garage attached to the side of the house. If you scroll down here into the elevations, please. So there's the existing house. Uh, if you look at the 3D image bottom right, you can see what the house looks like. That's that's the front, the front and side elevation. And the next image will show the extension on the side. Um, it's a pretty standard size for a garage. I think it's uh, 6.2 meters deep, 3.3 um, meters wide and 3.3 meters high. Um, visually, it, it is acceptable and there's no real impact on any of the neighbors. There's been no objections um, from any of the neighboring occupiers, as one would expect and there are no objections from our highways team. Um, so we are therefore recommending the application for approval. Thank you, Chairman. Thanks very much. Um, any questions? Anyone want to speak on anything? No, no, okay. All right, then we'll move straight to the vote then. And you see the recommendation there on page 56 is to approve. So we- Yep, Councillor Matthew Bailey. Four. Phil Downing. Uh, oh, four. Alan Jeffrey. Four. Mary Jones. Four. Sarah Keaton. Four. Mike Lewis. Four. Richard Lewis. Four. Nicola Matthews. Four. Mike White. Four. Andrew Williams. Four. Paul Lloyd. Unanimous again, Chair. Thank you. 